All right. Uh, hi, everyone. So, so we're presenting about how bacteriophages can be used to change microbiomes. So my name is Joey Zhu. Um, I go to California High School in the Bay Area. My name is Jake Penuelos, and I go to Camarillo High School. I'm Trevor Sargent, and I go to Maricosa. Okay, this is our abstract. Um, the question that we addressed was, um, what technologies can scientists use to accomplish this difficult task that we um, explained in the topic slide of reshaping microbiomes and ultimately getting rid of harmful um, antibacterial resistant bacteria? Um, bacteriophages, um, if, if you're not aware of what they are, um, they're basically viruses that infect ba bacteria with their own DNA. Um, they're the neck, um, harnessing what they can do. Um, they are the next big step towards curing very resistant bacteria like carpi pedenum resistant enterobacteria acacia and cancer. Um, we plan to modify proteins on the bacteriophages to t um, make them bind to bacteria of our choosing, therefore curing the disease. So for the topic slide, um, a microbiome is a group of microorganisms in a particular environment and biophages are a virus that parasitizes a bacterium by infecting and reproducing inside of it. So um, <clears throat> microbiomes are unique to everyone. They're not specific. Like me and Trevor might will have completely different microbiomes within us. And they can influence our health. So knowing which bacteria affect our health in which ways, can, um, <clears throat> we might be able to modify these microbiomes and potentially get rid of any destructive cells or improve any others that are not working to their full capacity. All right, um, this is the social context. Um, the bacteria, um, bacteria have been evolving and become a lot stronger after the um, almost overuse of antibiotics. This includes bacterial infections such as CRE, which was mentioned in two, like, two slides ago. Um, if we use bacteriophages to change the physical makeup of harmful bacteria, uh, billions of people in the future can live through um, diseases that were deemed incurable um, in the past. Also, there's no shortage of bacteriophages on the planet. We have more bacteriophages in our system than actual bacteria. Um, yeah. So for our precedents, um, scientists are currently genetically modifying viruses to cause antibiotic resistant bacteria to kill themselves. They're also studying how different diets and activities can change our microbiomes. Um, they've been trans it's been shown that they can transplant uh, microbiomes from one subject to another to change the health or the personality of the original subject. All right, now a project proposal. Um, we can use quantum dots and fluorescent proteins to identify harmful bacteria, modify the receptor binding, modify the receptor binding proteins of the bacteriophage um, to go to unique, uh, unique protein sites on the individual bac uh, on the bacterial, um, yeah, the, on the colonies, and um, heal or destroy the cells depending on whether the bacteria are harmful or damaged. So. Basically, like all the other projects and proposals mentioned earlier, this one is going to have challenges if we want to actually try to reach, reach our goal. First of all, we are dealing with a microbiome, which is many, many uh, different species of not just bacteria, but other animal cells, other protists, etc. So this protein, uh, so the protein research to find all the different proteins on each cell membrane is going to need a lot of genome sequencing. And although it is, um, although this kind of genome sequencing process has been getting very fast recently, then, uh, but today it's still very uh, costly and time consuming. Also, um, just like bacteria can develop resistance to antibiotics and become superbugs, there are actually, uh, there's actually evidence that bacteria can develop the same kind of resistance pattern to bacterial phages. Uh, the problem is that proteins uh, on the on different cell membranes can actually all be the same. So if we're not careful, then maybe we find the wrong protein, or um, then uh, or maybe we find a kind of receptor protein that also binds to other helpful bacteria. Then the bacterial uh, pro the bacteriophage protein 
will actually start to attack helpful bacteria in the human microbiome and start disrupting that uh, delicate ecosystem. In addition, there might be also, uh, there also might be some toxic, harmful byproducts in the lytic cycle as bacteriophages attack populations of the target bacterium. So, uh, science, the scientific community kind of can be seen as like just, uh, it's kind of like a tower. We keep going, we keep building up higher, but then the people who are building up right now have to have uh, kind of, as the saying goes, stood on the shoulders of giants. So, like uh, following this, we have to uh, use a lot of microscopy techniques. Like for example, as they mentioned earlier, fluorescent microscopy. And then also in addition, we might all, we will also have to use other techniques for like electron microscopy and scanning microscopy to actually deal with the proteins themselves and image them at a very high resolution. Our research in fluorescent microscopy is, will also be ben, ben, beneficial to other future biologists. They deal with a large amount of raw data today, but they can't make much sense of it as it's like m mostly all numbers and quanti quantitative observations. However, fluorescent microscopy is very special in the way that you can use it to color code, kind of look at interactions, find much more uh, meaningful qualitative observations. So then scientists can use these to quickly draw models for their own projects and kind of use that data as a complement for what, whatever they're researching. So these scientists can also expand our observations to research similar bacteriophages and diseases and also possibly find, find treatments for them. Ultimately, at the very end, we can even kind of like put all this data together with other scientists kind of as a jigsaw puzzle to find general patterns or behaviors in human microbiomes in general. So here's our contributions page and our references. So um, right now we're open to questions. Barney. <laughs> Uh, do you guys? Hmm, how should I say this? Do you guys fear that because we keep engineering these bacteriophages, is it possible that the microorganisms in the microbiomes could eventually adapt and be resistant to these bacteriophages? So, oh. as we kind of mentioned earlier, this is true because the process of uh, natural selection is going to yield several bacteriophage-resistant bacteria. However, um, actually, one of the one of the uh, challenge, uh, challenges that scientists predicted is that bacterial, uh, bacteria will actually develop resistance to both antibiotics and bacteriophages. However, in, the, uh, in, in most cases, when they develop resistance to one, they actually sacrifice their resistance to another. So then you can actually use these ba bacteriophages and antibiotics in tandem to treat certain diseases. And then also if it creates new protein sites, we can uh, identify the uniqueness in each back each of the new bacteria and then we can modify our bacteriophages to then bind to those sites instead any other questions Robert go ahead and I'll ask. so how this thing, but um, if, if you want to like use this to treat uh, like diseases, maybe um, kill bacteria, how are you, like, how can you make sure that uh, like when people use it, it doesn't kill like other good? Um, well, um, <coughs> each bacteria has binding proteins that the uh, biophage will link to. So we just make sure that we find a unique protein that our biophage will only connect to the bad bacteria that we are trying to isolate. So any of the good bacteria will not have that binding protein and the biophages will not inject their uh, DNA or into them. Yeah, so that's why it's important that we have to kind of carefully sequence and research every 
organism in the, every species within the microbiome so we don't accidentally make a mistake and tip the balance of the ecosystem. For example, um, we would kind of work with different quantum dots, maybe work with different uh, kinds of fluorescent proteins. We would see that, uh, we would try and kind of see uh, what different uh, indicators will bond to uh, different protein receptors. And then using the information that we already know about those indicators, like the quantum dots, then we could deduce what, um, what proteins are actually uh, actually actually comprise the bacteria of in, uh, the bacteria of interest, and this can also be concern, uh, c confirmed again, like with genome sequencing. And uh, <clears throat> microbiomes are kind of found everywhere, so we could use this experiment in mice or other animals to test how this will work. So maybe you're right. You would take the genome, try to identify all the different proteins you expect to be there and then utilize fluorescent tagging of that specific protein to verify that mm -hmm. it's actually there on the bacteria you want to kill, and then those would then become your target, mm -hmm. and you would use that protein. So basically, yeah. this kind of experiment design is like multifaceted, kind of, it, it eliminates a lot of possibility of error. Yeah, I agree. You'd have a lot of error if you just went for the genetics alone, and then tried to see what was really on the outside of the cell. You'd find mm -hmm. they have the capacity to make lots of proteins, but whether they do make them or not is a big variable. So verifying that with fluorescence would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. I did, well, I did have one, but Laurent actually asked it for me, so, <laughs> but, or I mean, I could still ask it. So um, I guess it's a related question. So, um, so you guys uh, mentioned that you would use uh, fluorescence tagging to find the harmful bacteria. Uh, what specifically would you be looking for in the harmful bacteria? So how, how would you actually tag only the harmful bacteria and not the good bacteria? So the thing is that we actually have to kind of so again, we have to use a lot of different methods to um, tag the bacteria. Maybe we first kind of just test a lot of different indicators, kind of try to see which, um, like let's say we use a green fluorescent uh, protein and then we also use like quantum dots which fluoresce with like a red color. So if, they, if those happen to each tag like one, um, to, different, to different bacteria, like let's say the red one, uh, red one happens to uh, bind with inert or um, inert or native bacteria, and then the green one um, b binds to the uh, harmful bacteria. We could kind of see that, like all the green specks under the microscope, maybe they have like very aggressive behavior. Maybe they quickly divide or take up resources. So we could kind of use that to um, to uh, deduce which bacteria don't belong in the microbiome. And once we once we um, determine that, then we can map out that the like a one of the, the strain of bacterium, and then we can find which uh, sites, which protein sites are unique to just that bacteria, and then we can send in the the quantum dots to make sure that our hypothesis is correct, and then bacteria pages go in. Basically, um, we we're just trying to look for as much evidence, like from all around the board, as we can. So then we could kind of draw a more general or unbiased conclusion. This is why we would also kind of test it in mice or something first, so we could see which uh, microbiomes are harmful. But in mammals, not other not other animals, because they relate most to us, and if we go into like amphibians or like birds, then it's gonna be a lot different than what would be in our genome. So given that there's so many strains of bacteria, um, and it's a massive project to figure out which ones might be good and which ones might be bad, where do you think you could turn a source for information on that so you don't have to do it all yourself? So as I was saying, it's kind of like, the scientific community is kind of like a tower, like maybe just below us, there are those other uh, scientists who are working to improve the genome sequencing process, or maybe there are already databases for like the said bacteria. Yeah, great idea. And you can come up with panels, 20 mm -hmm. example harmful pathogens and 20 example in harmful pathogens, and start with that. Mm -hmm. And as we get more and more metadata, you have more and more to work with with your techniques, we'll do that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you guys. Mm -hmm.